Whether you're decorating your home or a gift for the holidays, the Wishing You Joy Stamp TV Kit can help you make adorable tags that can be hung anywhere. Let me show you the tools and products you need to do this project. First, you're going to need some of the stamps from the Wishing You Joy Stamp TV Kit, and I am using this frame, and then I'm using the Santa Claus face and the little greeting that says naughty with a little box or nice with a little box. Then you're going to need the Nestabilities Spellbinders Die 16. This is label 16 and this will cut out this frame perfectly. You're also going to need some ink pads and here I have a Memento Cottage Ivy ink pad and a Memento Tuxedo Black ink pad. You're going to need a little bit of score tape and I'm using the 1 8 of an inch score tape. It's nice and thin but boy does it stick. You're going to need a glue dot, some cardstock, and the cardstock that I've chosen is the Gina K Designs 120 pound white heavy base weight cardstock. You're also going to need a pair of scissors, and I'm using the Cutter B ones because I like the way they cut ribbon, and some ribbon. So I have some of the white organdy ribbon from the new Wishing You Joy Stamp TV kit. I also have a Bow Easy. And I have a variety of markers. I have some Copics, I have a Bic marker, and then I have some of the Sakura glitter pens. One more thing you're going to need is just a little bit of regular household tape. All right, so let's begin by inking up the frame stamp using some of the Cottage Ivy Memento ink. And I like to lay this stamp on its back when I ink it up. It's such a big stamp and I really like to make sure that I can see that it's, it has complete coverage. And you're going to do two of these. And one way I like to stamp these larger images is I like to lay the cardstock down flat on the stamp and then gently rub over the entire image. And you always have to have one hand holding onto the cardstock so the cardstock doesn't shift but you really do get good coverage this way and you don't need to stand up and lean all of your weight on it. So that's one. And now I'm going to do one more. I like the Cottage Ivy ink. It's a really pretty Christmas green. All right, and I'm going to do my second one. And again, gently rubbing all over the surface to get a nice solid impression. And there we go. There's the second one. Now my next step is to stamp inside of these frames. So that's where the Santa Claus stamp comes in and the Naughty and Nice stamp. On one side, I'm going to stamp the Santa Claus stamp, but I want to make sure that I turn it this way because this is the way that the tag is going to hang when I'm done. I don't want to stamp it this way. And let me ink up Santa here, and I will stamp him right here in the center. There we go. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my other panel that I made, and I'm going to stamp naughty and nice, still the same orientation. And you want to make sure you have this one the right way. I guess it really wouldn't matter since this is a square. You could turn it upside down, but there we go. And now I'm going to take my red Bic marker here. This is the rambunctious red. And I'm just going to make a little check mark next to nice. Now maybe your recipient should have a different check mark, but mine was nice. So, okay. My next step is going to be to cut these out, and I'm going to use my cuddle bug for that. Starting with the A plate, and then the B plate. Now, obviously you need to kind of turn this the right orientation because it will stick off the edges if you do it this way, but that's okay. You'll be able to see and you'll be able to get it nice and even. All right, so I'm positioning this using the C plate I'm cutting then I'm going to flip that over and I'm going to emboss it as well so I'll use the embossing mat 
the B plate, and then a piece of chipboard on top. And now, you can see when I pull that out, that's got a nice little embossed edge around the outside, and it's all cut out. Now I'm going to do that to the other one. We've got Santa here. So now we have a front and a back of our tag, and those two pieces are going to go together. Well, my next step is to color, and I want to color Santa very traditionally. I'm going to color his hat using that rambunctious red, and I like using the very fine tip marker because you can get into the smallest areas with these. You'll be able to see what I mean when I am going around all of this little fluffy stuff from his hat, I can get right into those little areas so easily without any bleed or without going over the lines. So I'm going to finish coloring this and then I'm going to show you a little trick to texturize this hat. Very similar to some of the things I've done before but I'm just going to go in one direction. All right, so I'm going to use my Copic blender pen. And I'm going to use the bullet side. You can do this with a sketch pen too, using the brush side. Just use the very tip. And I'm going to create just some lines going across. I'm not going to make this into a plaid. I just want to give it some texture, as if it was nice, warm, furry fabric. And just that little bit of white in there really does the trick. Doesn't look nice and fluffy. Look at that. Okay. And then my next step is going to be to color his beard. Now, I don't want this beard to appear to be gray. I want it to appear to be white, but I want it to have some fluff in it. So I'm using a very light Copic marker here. This is N1 Neutral Gray. And I'm just going to color circles around the outside perimeter here. And I'm not being real careful about getting real close to the line. Then I'm going to do another row, leaving a little bit of white there, and another row, and one last row. And I'm going to color his mustache here with a little bit of that neutral gray and his eyebrows. Now, I'm going to go back over that with my Copic Blender Pen and just kind of blend those areas together. And it'll just soften the edges a little bit, but it'll still leave that little bit of white in between, which I like, because that makes it look more curly. Now I'm gonna color Santa's face in using E00, which is skin white. This is a really good color for a lot of skin tones. I'm not going to forget to get his nose here. There we go. Okay. And then I'm going to color his glasses in with BG10, which is cool shadow. And although glasses normally wouldn't be blue, this will just give him a little bit of a glazy look. And I'm just scribbling a little bit of that in the center. Now for the white on his hat, I really don't want to color anything, but I do want to glitter it up. So I'm going to use a little bit of the Sakura glitter pen, and I'm going to color all of his, all of the white parts of his hat just using that sparkle. And after we're all done the project, we'll turn down the no glare lights and you'll be able to see all the sparkle. Now another place I want to add sparkle is in the rim between the solid line and the pattern of my frame. So I'm going to color that entirely in. 
and I'm going to do that on both the front frame and the back frame. Once I've gone all the way around the perimeter on both frames, I'm going to use the Sakura Stardust pen in the Lime Star, and I'm going to color this part of the frame right over the green with some shimmer. And that'll really bring out the green even more. And again, you'll see how all of this shimmers when the project is finished. And you're going to do that on both pieces. Then to add just a little sparkle to the hat, I'm going to use the red star pen and I'm going to just do a couple little dots on each of those white areas. And that'll give it some shimmer, but it won't be solid and it also won't take away from that little bit of texturizing that I did. So there's his little finished hat. So once you've colored in both frames and both perimeters of the frames with your stardust pen, the next step is going to be to put these pieces together but put some ribbon in between. Let me show you how easy this is to do. I'm going to take some of the organdy ribbon and I'm going to make a tag about a, a ribbon piece about that long because what I want to use this one for is a door hanger. So I'm going to cut that off right there and then I'm going to take a little bit of scotch tape, making sure I'm using the top point there. I'm going to roll this ribbon. I'm going to fold it over once here like that and then fold it over again like that. And I'm going to lay that right in between. Can you see that? Right there. And then grabbing a piece of tape, I would recommend you actually cut the tape beforehand and stick it to something so it's easier to grab. I'm just going to tape that down. Now using some score tape, I'm going to cut off some lines here and just run them right on the inside of the frame. You know how I love my score tape, it just sticks to everything. So we're going to use four little strips here and then I'm going to do one right over that piece of ribbon to secure that. Okay. And one small piece right over the ribbon. There. Really press that down. Now, peeling all the backing off. You're going to want to line these two panels up. So I would start at the top. Make sure the top two pieces are aligned properly. So we're just going to hold those there like that and we can press down a little bit and now move to the next panel there, the next side, and make sure that's tight and right. And then the bottom one here and then what's left should work perfectly. And really squeeze down on it and make sure that the score tape is really tight. And now that ribbon is coming out of the top of that and you don't have to punch any holes in there. And my final step to really make this look pretty is I'm going to use the Bow Easy and I'm going to make a nice bow. And I'm going to do that. You've seen me use the Bow Easy before. You're going to wrap around two times because I'm going to make this a double bow so that's two times and then push it through this little hole and grab it and then come up in between these two and feed it through the loop that's left up on top oops Remember that has to feed through there now you want to give it a nice tight pull. And now you've made a pretty little double loop bow. I'm going to just trim that off, a little decorative trim here. And do the same thing on the other side. And then I'm going to grab that glue dot and put the glue dot right on the back of that bow. Stick that 
right on there and separate the two loops so it is a real double loop bow and then I'm going to press that right on the top here and press down really hard I can spread that out again and what I like about that is it doesn't show on the other side so when they turn it over you don't see any nothing getting pulled through there but it's a nice finished look now I'm going to show you what this project looks like with the anti-glare lights down and look at how pretty this sparkles that's so pretty. Can you see the little dots of sparkle on the hat too? And all around the rim. And then I want to show you one other place where I added some sparkle. On the back here to the check mark, I just ran over that red check mark again with a little bit of the red star pen to make that sparkle as well. Hang these tags on large presents, doorknobs, and bottles of wine to create beautiful decorations for the holiday season.